Okay, he's going to read this with me. It does say to warm the engine up to normal temperature, shut the engine off, connect the timing light, connect the tachometer, which I don't need to connect the tachometer because the van has one. Put the jumper wire in between TE1 and E1. That um, will take away the advanced timing from the van. Uh, ensure base timing, blah, blah, blah. So first of all, I have to get the idle down for automatic transmission to 750 manual is for 700 rpm and then once that's done you can see the one two three here which is one two three steps here so with transmission in neutral and parking brake applied which for automatics I think park or neutral either way um, check it check the jumper wire between the data port there and with the with the jumper removed it should be advanced timing of 12 with the jumper wire in it should be 5 that's on the on the flywheel when you're doing the timing that's explaining how to connect the tachometer if you don't if you don't um, have one in the van already I do have one of those tools but I've never needed to use it and it's kicking a jumper wire idle speed cautions some tachometers not, might not be compatible so make sure you got the right tachometer that's the idle speed specifications Okay. You can hear my van running in the background there, it's just warming up. And we'll throttle position sensor. I'm not too sure if I'll worry about that. I'll come back to that. Okay, so where I'm at. Uh, timing light, um, I'm not connecting up to the, the van's battery because the length of the cable won't reach far enough around the front because mid-engine it's a bit far away so I'm using a uh, motorbike battery on the side of the van to fix that up this is what I had to do to um, get my fans working again this um, inline fuse um, trips out and the fans stop working even when the van's overheating that, that trips out and the fans aren't working that's no good to me so I'm going to be bypassing this but uh, I also need to disconnect the batteries, the fans right now because I have power fans that I added, not the clutch fan that's with the van. So uh, the book does say if you've got power fans to disconnect them while doing the while doing the timing. I guess that's say you're not putting extra load on the alternator. Uh, so I'll do that. I'll disconnect this. I don't, there's no point for that now. Um, but I'll take one of these lines off so the fans don't cut in and what I've, around this side here I'd suggest that you do the same as me now that's that's where the dizzy is now I've already um, loosened off the bolt to the, uh, to the dizzy uh, not adjusted it any, just loosened it off, but there's still tension on there, so when the van is running, I can easily adjust it, like loosen it off, adjust it, tighten it back up a nip, uh, because this exhaust is hot, and it's a real bad spot to have this uh, dizzy in the exhaust close together, you don't want to burn yourself, so probably long sleeve clothes if you've got any, to um, help, pre uh, help to prevent getting burnt. Uh, I'll just cop it on the chin if I get burnt. Uh, okay, so that's it there. That's my timing light, which this will be the first time after a year of buying it that I actually get to use it. Maybe you can see that there. And uh, I've got the battery on the side here, which I've got on charge at the moment because it was a bit low. So I've just got the charger on it. I'm going to leave the charger connected while I'm doing this. And um, yeah, I guess that I'm ready to disconnect that fan and 
connect the timing light up, start her up, and uh, we'll have a look at the timing. That's the fan disconnected for now. Just want to show you as quickly too how I knew which wire on a dizzy to connect to. Being able to see it visibly might help others out without having to think about it, I guess. Now this one here is your number one spark plug lead. Now you should be able to see that there. Mine are actually labelled. That's part of the reason why I got them. I'll turn this light on quickly. See there, number one on mine, and that goes to this one here. Sorry, take that zoom out. So that's that one there. Yes, Jack. You burn yourself. No, Jack. Likes to be a part of everything. Um, that's good. No oil leaks. It's okay. So uh, I'll start the van now and I'll connect this timing light up and we'll have a look at the timing. All right. So TE1 and E1 jumper is connected. Okay, everything looks good there. Oh, it was a little bit on the low side, isn't it? Let's just adjust that. I will bring the idle back down when I take the jumper off. This is only for timing purposes. Turn that there. Bring that up. That's a good spot there. Okay, so now we'll go under and have a look at the timing. Okay. I'll try and do this. Again. That should be five. Four. If you can see that, but my timing is just before five. I'll bring that to five on there. Yeah. Try to do it again. Zero is way out. I'm going to have to be in a different way. It's a bit clearer. I don't know how well this camera is showing up. But, if you can see that there, my timing is actually wrong. It is just after zero. It should be on five. So I'm going to adjust that distributor to bring that to five. There's going to be too much mucking around to show you is um, me getting in and out of the van all the time and recording this. So uh, this is what I'm going to do just to show you here. 
and uh, I hope you can hear me all right. So I'll put this on five, on something light on five. That should be on zero then. And it's before zero. Can you see that? Zero on my front light. That's a zero on the timing, and that's wrong. So I need to adjust my distributor. So I'll um, do that, and then we'll go from there. Perfect now, it's on five, where it should be. I'll take that jumper off. Oh. If I take the jumper off, it should get a 12. Can, but I hope you can. It's now on 12 with the jumper off the CE1, the E1 jumper off. It's now 12. So with it on, it's 5. With it off, it's 12. Exactly where it should be. So I'll tighten the distributor up now and put everything back together. Okay, just wanted to show you here. If you can see it again. If it's not, I've burnt myself a few times right now. Um, see the mark, I, I marked it first before adjusting and uh, you can see which way I adjusted it to it's anti-clockwise to bring the timing uh, um, it was smack on dead centre before and that's bad timing uh, so this is where it should be now and don't forget, because I don't think I showed you that there is two bolts that you need to undo one on top of the dizzy and one on the bottom and uh, better to undo the top one first uh, probably do it all while everything's cold just loosen them off and just work with the bottom one for tension uh, put a bit of tension on it to hold the dizzy stable while you make the adjustment once you've finished turn the van off and you can either wait, everything, wait for everything to cool down again and tighten it up or do what I did and just tighten it up I've been tagged a few times from the exhaust but that's alright I've had worse uh, and that's that's we're done. That's all tight now. Timing lights all off. Everything's where it should be. Now with the uh, with my um, diagnostics tool, what I found interesting is. It doesn't automatically connect like it should. The settings are on to automatically connect. Okay, so now if I see how it says minus on the ignition, it says minus 11.8, so almost minus 12. And if I earth it out, like uh, not earth it out, but CE1 to E1, it brings it down to minus 4.8. To me, that's telling me the timing of the van. Um, so, if that's in correspondence of what I've done, we're all good. And uh, I've got to tell you though, my van always had a sound like idling, but you hear, and uh, you can probably hear in previous videos if you're interested in trying to go back and listen, um, it always had that running fine, but you have an occasional miss type sound. It's purring now, um, that sound is gone. So definitely needed the timing done a long time ago. Uh, I'll connect up my power fans now so the temperature cools down again. We'll go up to 93. RPM is a bit high as well. 
with the jumper off. So we'll bring that idle down. Again with this screw here. I'm going to bring that down to we're in neutral. Make sure we're in neutral. Just for argument's sake. With automatics, park in neutral shouldn't matter, but the workshop manual says do it, so let's do it. Let's bring this down. Down to about 800. Perfect. Okay, well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that this video um, was helpful. And um, I'll leave it as that. And uh, one last thing don't forget to take out the EFI fuse when you finish playing around for your timing. Uh, because uh, the ECU will more than likely. Um, come up with a trouble code or something so once you've finished muck around for the timing and you're happy with it reset the ECU by removing the EFI fuse so that being done put the fuse back in after two minutes and ECU is reset ready to relearn and job's done all right thanks for watching guys